All right, guys, what's up? New video here. We are at round three of Pro Am US Drift Circuit out here at the home track at OSW. The whole rig in here. Got the car here all ready to go. A few small adjustments to it, some alignment stuff once we get it out of the car, once we get it out of the trailer. But it's supposed to, it's supposed to rain, so I'm kind of waiting off to see how it's going to go otherwise. But other than that, ready to go. Fuel is ready with the one ethanol. Fully no tires are ready to go. And it's crazy because this round, we have some pretty serious tires. Oh, so you guys know we are running Valino tires this year. I've been running the Pagia 08C 285 and 265 tire, but as you guys know, they're very popular. So, you know, we've been trying to make them last and all that stuff, but everybody's buying them. And it's totally fine, but you know, the 285 08C is an amazing tire. It lasts forever, has plenty of grip. It's 300 tread wear, but it feels like a 200-ish kind of tire, and it lasts so long for the price and the size and the way it's designed just feels so good on the car. No other tire feels like that. Um, the first round of this year, we ran 285 08Cs, and the last round we had 265 because we added 285s, and I had like six left and finished the event off on those until um, like top eight on was on 285s, and before that was 265s. But now they're at 285. The car just feels so much better on 285s because the car is set up for 285s and the 265s are a little bit smaller and they're like shorter as well, so it changes a lot of stuff. So the only tires I had in stock of 285s was the Valino Pergia, Pergia, I forget how to say it, but it's one of those words, uh, 08R. And these tires are 200 tread wear and they are absolutely incredibly grippy and they're awesome and I'll, I'll be very, very fast on them. So it's gonna be a weekend of you know balancing the grip, mechanical grip to tire ratio, which is fine. Um, but yeah, we are running the Pergia uh, 08R uh, 285s. And they have an OR8 RS and then a new tire that came out with just now two. It's even like a 180 tread wear and 160 tread wear, which is absolutely insane. I wouldn't even bother running that. But we're running that this weekend. We're also gonna run 265 slash 285 08Cs that I have left to burn off to get a feel for the track and then had those for slower cars and had 285 08Rs for the faster cars and the main comp. So it's gonna be an awesome weekend. Big shout out to Valino Tires, Mike over there in Texas. I'm so stoked to working with them this year. I probably won't run anything else until FD. All right, while I had the time, and it's calm on Friday before I start getting the car on the trailer, I'm walking the track. I know this track very well. It's the home track I've been driving here for a long time. I don't drive it that much because it's tough on tires, but I have no choice this time. Over the years working in Formula Drift, I get a lot of data and I learn a lot from working on teams and stuff like that. And then I apply that to my program and it works very well, knowing what to do with car wise, setup wise, and even strategy wise. So uh, this track is really fun, but it's terrible, terrible on tires. So uh, the bank's not that bad, but the inner apron here is all really, really bad on tires. So you gotta dial in wheel speed, you gotta dial in grip, and you gotta make it, you gotta make it last as long as you can. One strategy on this track, I won't say that much, is basically learning how to have enough, the most tire possible going into outer two on your second lap. So even if you got 500 horsepower, 600 horsepower, 700 horsepower, 1,000 horsepower, this place is a cheese grater. Now, the 08Cs can probably last me three or four laps, but the 08Rs are gonna last me for sure just two laps because of the tread wear difference and the differences of the tires. So but other than that, it's it's a really fun track. So burnout box is right here, one more tires up here, leads here, chase is here, and it's a direct shoot straight shot down to outer zone one which is the outer zone one starts there the whole entire wall and that cone there inner clip one inner clip two to outer zone two now yeah it's only one transition but it's very very hard to tandem very fast on the bank and stuff like that you can always have factors that can make this very hard also there's a bump coming down off of outer zone to, uh, one down to the bank to the flat surface it used to be way worse but they paved that one year so it's not as aggressive now but now you gain a lot of speed coming off of that in the middle to outer to inner two so it's also a little bit of a jump there too but if you take it a certain way it won't be that won't be that bad but yeah it's all about strategy this round that is the main thing people lack is strategy um, learning that in FD and over the years is a very good tactic to learn. If you don't have that, you're definitely going to struggle. If you're just trying to win, being the fastest car, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff, it's going to be very, very hard on you on this track and or any track, really. It's definitely a whole thing on any track, but this track especially is very, very, very tough. And also dialing, dialing and shock stuff is very, very important too. And we also run an offset alignment to have some grip on the bank and stuff like that. But I don't give too much away. There's some factors that I, you know, keep to myself and information that's, you know, not secret, but it's just things that we do to be fast and competitive. But I'm very excited. So that's the layout, OSW Oval, for round three of Pro-Am. And now let's get the car out, do some prep, and then I might see you guys then or tomorrow.
right, guys, in a rush. It's the day of Pro Am. Get in the car now and go practice. Got everybody here helping out. Let's see how we do.
fuck. Yep, rod not the motor. Rod not the motor. Fuck me. Fuck! 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 Motor's gone. We got nothing. guys well there's that oh this motor has been really really fucking damn good to me but bank tracks are front sump pans even with a baffle oil pressure is a thing and coming into outer two or in middle of outer two i heard it detonate and i heard it die and we dropped knocked the motor luckily didn't throw about the block thank god i heard i heard it I, I i heard it detonate and i shut it off so i didn't win on the block luckily but the motor unfortunately is gone but this, it doesn't end here. We have two cars that I'm gonna rent or borrow just to put points on the board, all right? So we're gonna try this, and I think we'll be good to get some points on the board. We're gonna borrow either Kelsey's S14 with the S20 or Paul's Turbo E46 just to put points on the board and continue on. So I'm excited. Hopefully we can do something, but it really freaking sucks that my car is absolutely done for this weekend. It sucks. This motor's been a lasting for a long time. It's been great, but it's time to Put that aside for now, handle that later, and find a car. So let's try and do that. Guys, we have, we are borrowing Kelsey Rawlings uh, old pro spec car. It's a built Mazworks SR20. No dog box, no quick change, but we can make it work. Wise Fab BCs. And we also have Paul's E46, uh, Turbo E46. We're gonna try out too, see what I like better, see what I'm comfortable in. So we'll see what happens. We'll go from there, but we're still driving for boards on the board. So let's do it. <laughs> guys update for you it's been a really annoying day um we got kelsey's car we brought paul's car here too uh i like kelsey's car more than the skip had and i it, i felt more of the car because you know s chassis wise fab all that kind of stuff pretty good sr20 setup as well uh big big shout out to paul and kelsey for helping me out with that lending me those cars to try out um unfortunately we're having a lot of issues not a lot of issues just some some stuff that so stuff on Kelsey's car that, you know, that car's been sitting for months and they haven't really had any time to fix anything and well, to address things. And like, they luckily were nice enough to like, let me, ha let me try the car out. And 
it just didn't it didn't work out so um, if you guys don't know how this works in FD basically what happens is um, I so I have a buy run in the top 32 so I'm in top 16 and this is all about points and to get my top 16 points all I have to do all I have to do is drive across the start line to get my points that's all that matters right now it's the best we can do uh, I went and drove the, her car on the skid pad and it's just like there's just some there's just a lot of things that just aren't safe uh, to compete with right now especially on the bank track with the wall so what we're gonna do is go out in that car do a uh, you know a slight little burnout box thing and you know circle around and drive across the line and call it that's it and get my points and then that'll be it for this round unfortunately so I'm definitely gonna lose points right now unfortunately because this is what it is my podiuming obviously as well but we gotta get this thing back to the shop and pull this motor out and do some upgrades because the reason why we have lost this motor is because of oil starvation on the front sump oil pan on JC's. Even with the baffle, it can have problems. And I think that even the oil pan, the oil pump failed, or I starved it, or a mixture of both. Uh, I heard it detonate. I just shut it off, and I just I knew it was gonna throw a rod at the block, so I shut it off to save that. Luckily, we did. Uh, so it's just knocking. We didn't have to throw a rod, so that was really good. No fire, no oil, no mess. But basically, right now. To move forward is we go out there, cross the finish line, sign our do this event, put a new motor in this thing, but also do wide fat V3 with the rear sump pan. Because the rear sump pans on the JCs do not have uh, oil starvation issues. So that is what we're gonna do to do the next level of this car. So we'll see how this day goes. We're kind of just here to remain all day off and all. It's been terrible. So we're just gonna hang out, cross the line, support other drivers and go from there. All right, guys, it is the end of uh, round three of Pro-Am, and today was a very important one to be in the points race. Um, but unfortunately, we are in a not great spot. Um, when you don't podium or get high in the points, it's hard to catch back up. And Ryan Coffin just won round two and three, so he's way up in points. I don't think it's even possible for me to win the series, but I still need to prove myself, my car, and the sponsor, the sponsors that I have what it takes, basically, and enough to be what I gotta be in the sport and stuff like that. Uh, today was not a good day. Started off super good. Really, really stoked on uh, my first two laps. The one lead lap I had was literally out the gate. Suspension-wise, gear-wise, power-wise, the car was absolutely freaking perfect felt absolutely amazing the fuel suspension is just again a game changer like i know i keep saying that i know it's funny but like it is unbelievably good and it changes everything uh shout out to freddie who helps me get this this car tuned up and the suspension and the alignment and all the little secrets we have learning and pro drifting we apply to ourselves and it's all my friends and family that came out like all of my friends all of my family came out and to support and help and that means everything. Unfortunately, of course, the warm now where they're all here at the home track, uh, we lose a motor. It sucks. It really sucks. But again, and also a huge, huge shout out to Paul and Kelsey Rawlings. Um, they both lent me their cars to, they both the cars actually, we went and got Kelsey's car and our friend Jason Frank uh, from Distinct Auto Boutique, who also helps run the normal OSW events here, um, brought Paul's car. I went, me and Paul went to go get Kelsey's car and we uh, we brought both cars here. I drove both of them. I felt better in Kelsey's car, but then her car started to have problems with the battery and and the the drain. It was draining, and the the wise fab wasn't set up correctly, and the power steering was having issues. It was just a clusterfuck. But she was so nice. Thank you, Kelsey, for helping me with that. And we were able to go out and get our top 16 points because I had a buy run of the top 32 and went to top 16. And if you guys didn't know in FD, the rules are if you just go in the burnout box, cross the burnout box, you get your top 16 points. So at least I got top 16 points and not zero like I would have if I didn't have a spare car or something like that. But this round was not ours. It sucks, it's racing. Um, me and my sponsors have already been talking today and they're gonna get me set up with a new engine and we're gonna come back stronger. We're going to go to V3 Wise Fab to convert to a rear sump pan because that is the culprit of this for sure. Um, when the front sump pan JZ is in high horsepower, especially on bank tracks and drifting, the, the motors don't like it. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. But uh, today it was not on our side. 
and that's racing. This stuff happens. It happens to the best in the world. Multiple drivers here at OSW this year at FD. Blue Engine's the same way. We also had five other drivers today at this event blow engines. And sometimes the events like that and we reward the people. But I'm confident in myself and my team and, and, and my sponsors and just everybody coming together to get a new engine in the car. We have about a month and a week to get this new engine done and in the car and the new wise fab and to uh, basically just change the car, go around four swinging, bust butt, get the car dialed again with a new setup, the new motor, we can push harder and just make more power just for fun and just go around four and just fuck it up. That's all I can say. Uh, again, big shout out to my friends, family, sponsors, all the support. It's just amazing. Again, it sucks that what happened, but we're going to move on from this and uh, come back stronger as always. The car is already better with the new cooling setup, so that's a plus. Uh, that one lap was unbelievably good. I drugged the wall the whole time, filled every zone, and the car was fast, and it was actually a pretty damn loose setup. So it's amazing what this car can do when the setup is perfect. So I'm so stoked. The car is great. I feel great, but now it's time to come back and do what we can to be the best. And uh, again, if I don't get my license this year, I'm going to petition into next year. So, chasing the dream, guys. This is racing. This is what happens. Um, it's not fun sometimes, but you know it can happen at any moment. Again, the best that happens to the best in the world. It's racing. These motors are not indestructible. It's just what it is. And people that are like, oh, you blew up so many engines. I'm like, I have like almost 20 events on this motor and drifting. That's a lot of fucking time on a motor for drifting. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot of time. So, if you guys don't understand that, don't comment. <laughs> because you guys don't, you aren't aware. We push the hell out of these motors way past capabilities in drifting. And uh, when you push it to the test, this is what happens sometimes. And uh, the motor owed me nothing. I beat the shit out of it for almost two years of straight abuse at about 800 horsepower. And uh, it took it for a while. But, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm rambling. It's time to go. Uh, next video you guys will obviously know we'll be pulling out this engine and going on to the new setup. So once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys very soon.